Welcome back to The Breakfast. And uh, now we're moving straight to Wally Scott yeah, to discuss sports this morning. Uh, two major conversations we're going to be having. First of all, tomorrow is the big day. A lot of people have been waiting for. Some excited, mm. some scared. Some of them, of course, uh, will wake up on Sunday morning with tears. Looking forward to that. The Champions League clash between Chelsea and Manchester City takes place tomorrow. And, of course, then we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Naomi Osaka, who has uh, decided she will, no, very likely, will not be attend attending some uh, uh, press conferences, uh, press briefing, rather, with uh, reporters. Let's first of all talk about the Champions League. Good morning, Wally Scott. Good morning. Good morning to you. Looking forward to Chelsea tears on, on Sunday morning. I can't wait. I am completely excited. Looking... looking forward to somebody's tears. I didn't say Chelsea. I'm hoping you, it's you, Chelsea's tears. I am looking forward to Chelsea tears. Deep inside, I'm hoping Chelsea too. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. Mm. Good morning. But, but let's talk about it. You know, what, what are the, what are the um, you know, little details here and there that, you know, we must know before the game takes place tomorrow? Well, the good thing is um, Frank Lampard left Chelsea and then Thomas Tuchel came in. And um, the good thing about it was um, everybody's talking about Lampard leaving. It wasn't good enough for the club. But I think when Lampard, before Lampard left, he bought a whole set of players. And they were all set of players who were Champions League material. You know? And um, Tuchel came in and proved that by um, not winning the league, yes, <clears throat> but winning Champions League finals, which is enough, really. Um, he's got players, um, Timo Werner, um, Akim Ziyech, Ben Chilwell, basically Champions League players. And, they're there. Now, the, 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 the talking points would be Chelsea have this funny in-house bravado around them like we beat them twice this season, we'll beat them again. You know, and I think you beat a different Man City, a different Pep Guardiola. Um, Pep Guardiola is really, really your regular modern day coach. He's cunning. He will cheat. He will do everything mortally possible to ensure that he wins a match when he gets to the finals. Now, don't let's forget that Man City are coming into this as debutants. They've never been to the finals before, and they want to win. Chelsea have won it before. So who has more to lose um, if, you, if the game goes to, to the other side? I think Man City have more to lose. Guardiola has his name at, at stake. He has the club at stake. Now, we hear that on or something that's the name of the Manchester City, he's looking inwards to find out what the Chelsea owner wants to give Chelsea players if they win, and he's doubling it. I can imagine him in that position. Hmm. Everything the Chelsea owner says, he's doubling it to make sure the guys get the props they want to actually do well. So I think Chelsea have a fantastic squad. They have um, confidence with them. They've beaten Man City twice this season. That's a good thing for them. But like I said, I would want Thomas Tuchel, and I think he knows that, that beating Man, uh, Man City in those duels is a different ball game when it comes to Champions League finals. Guardiola would rather die than give it to them on the pass of Has uh, Guardiola ever lost a Champions League final? He's never gotten there. You know, well, he's... Not with he, Man City. He's, no. Not with Man City, no. no. I'm saying, has he ever lost a kind of no, Champions League final? No, no. Yeah. And um, this is a Guardiola who can play games with your mind. He played Man United at a point, and um, Solskjaer was new in Old Trafford, then in Man United. And the guy put his two strikers, his two trusted strikers on the bench. And I think that stunned Sokja. I was like, Jesus and Kun Aguero were on the bench. And he brought in a Kevin De Bruyne as a dummy nine. And they won that match. That is the taught man you a football lesson that day. Yeah. This is a guy. Oh, we'll yeah. Couple of weeks this later. is a Guardiola who actually comes to a game and says, I can't win this game. There's no way I can win this game. Kunaguero, you're my most cunning player on the field of play. Just four. Get me penalties. And he got penalties twice in that game. And he scored both goals and he won the game. That's Guardiola. He's modern day, he's a practical coach. And he's going to do everything possible to look for Chelsea's mistakes tomorrow evening and work on that. So what are you expecting tomorrow evening? Yes, um, Chelsea have a good squad. I'm expecting a man city that will come guns blazing. Pep Guardiola, who wants to win this, doesn't matter what it takes to win it, even if it takes all night, he's going to win it. So I think um, I'm seeing a Guardiola winning this. Mm. But like what most bookmakers think, um, it won't be as easy as it would be. It will be a tough game. Might even go into penalties, but I see it ending Manchester's favour. But Oco Chelsea will give them a run for their money. Thomas Tuchel, um, you know, leaving PSG, of course, uh, we, we, a lot of people expected that he was going to get to the finals with PSG. Um, but unfortunately, his PSG time, you know, was cut short. Um, so do you think that would be enough um, fire in him to want to win it 
uh, with Chelsea. Yes, both coaches have a point to prove, have their names at stake right now. Um, Guardiola wants to win it with Man City. Um, Tuchel was sacked because he couldn't win it with Paris Saint-Germain. And um, now he's in Chelsea. And he has a, <clears throat> has a message to send to the PSG owner saying, listen, that was a mistake. I can't make it happen. I could have won it with PSG. So both um, coaches have a message to send to their owners. And um, yes, Tuchel would want to win this one to tell the PSG owners and say, okay, I could have won it with you guys. You guys could have been patient with me. Yes, both coaches, yes, do have a, a rep to keep at this point. Okay, and let's just talk about the teams now. We're away from the coaches, um, the teams, um, you know, equally matched in your books, do you think? Yes. Um, I think um, Chelsea would have an edge based on the confidence level they have, beating them twice this season, this year. And um, they've got some very fantastic players in the squad. But um, what Man City have going for them that Chelsea don't have is they have a bond. This team has played together for like forever. And Chelsea still have a, f a few new players, very good players. But it's always in football, there are 11 players. So there should be a bond. And is there as much bond in Chelsea like in Man City? I don't mm -hmm. think so. The Man City players have played together for like forever. The only new players, Ruben Diaz, who won the, the Player of the Year in the Premiership last season. First season in Man City and he's won the Player of the Year already. And he's brought stability in the defence. The defence of Man City would have been a problem for a while, but he's brought stability into it. So I think Man City should be the most complete team on the night. But Chelsea have got some very new players who are very good, who could just change the bookmakers' predictions in in, in minutes, really. Okay, um, and sorry, um, striker or striker? Hmm. Striker and striker, Chelsea strikers are really very wasteful and tend to depend on the expertise and the ingenuity of midfielders like Ngolo Kante, who can make it happen for them. But uh, Man City strike forces, wow, Gabriel Jesus, hmm. um, Raheem Sterling, they will run at you. They will always come at you. And I think the defense of Chelsea are going to have a full 90 minutes, no time to rest, no leave, no transfer, 90 minutes for Chelsea defenders, no doubt. Mm. Indeed, there's a lot of um, anticipation for tomorrow's game, um, but, <coughs> excuse me, away from the battle tomorrow, um, looking at the, the war in general, this whole UEFA League season, how would you rate, you know, the different uh, clubs that are, that are in this? I think it's, it, it's, it's funny that um, if you had asked me at the beginning of the year if two English clubs would be in the final, I'd be like, lie. I can't two English clubs in the final. But is the English Premier League the best club in the, um, the best league in the world now? I don't think so. But I'm stunned that we have two English teams in the Champions League final. We had one in the Europa League finals. And that says a lot of how much they worked on their clubs, mm -hmm. how much they spent and how much their management has done for them, you know. Um, the other clubs, um, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, uh, Paris, they've, they've consistently relied too much on their old war horses. And like the word says, they are old war horses and they are growing old, they are aging. And um, you can imagine a Barcelona who say, will consistently depend on Lionel Messi. That has backfired on them now. Um, Real Madrid sold um, Ronaldo and brought in a, an overbloated Eden Hazard, overhyped Eden Hazard. Look at where the, where the final sales now. So I think um, this is a lesson for other clubs in UEFA Champions League for next season. I say, listen, you must, if you want to get something good, you must spend good money. You know, you must actually have good management and spend money. Juventus um, almost crashed out because um, they were over dependent on. Cristiano Ronaldo, and um, you can't have one player, one tree to make a forest these days. You must have three, four, five players who you spent good money on and you can depend on when it comes to this level. And the English clubs have spent so much money, have invested so much in their players, and it's paid off. Three English clubs in two finals in the spirit of one week. I think it's good for, for, for the league. Mm. Yeah. One of the positives, I believe, is, you know, is the fact that we you know, can now have some fans in the stadium. Uh, yeah. Do you think that would change also or would affect the game? Yes, of course. Um, we, we saw um, when Europa League was being played, when the, the players were coming out, you know, they were all looking up and there was this green on their faces and they were all happy. The fans were back. And then tonight, uh, tomorrow night in um, Estadio de, de Gragao, as in Porto, um, they would have 12,600 fans. And I'm not talking about the fans that are going to be in pubs around the sta stadium, you know, but in the stadium itself. 
12,600 fans making massive noise. And I think there's a, there's a thing that the noise of the fan does to your, you know, it gives you this extra effort to want to do more because they're actually hailing you, you know. So, yes, I think it's a good thing. I think um, football has been drab, very boring without the noise and the misbehavior, if I want to use that, of the, of, the, of the spectators. So I think, yes, I think it's, it's always a, a plus when the players know they're hailing me. They always do better, you know? Yeah, I believe so.